Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video today, we're going to answer a question that Paul had here in the Funnel Builder Certification Program. And let me uh, blow up his screen here to show you what he was looking at. And he was having a problem because he was trying to get these, all these images, these flowers to line up basically in a grid pattern on the page. And he was trying it with a flex container, which is perfectly fine. But as you can see here, as he resized the page, it changed it so he wanted it to be more like you know more like this uniform on the page but then as he starts changing the size the width of it the um the roses especially were pushing in over the top where was the one here where it seemed to be yeah i mean here especially you had these two gigantic pictures here and then you had some smaller ones right there and so obviously that did not look good on the screen so let me show you what i did to get this set up a couple different ways um, that you can do this type of a grid one is going to be using flex boxes like he was using and another one is just to use native elements inside of click funnels and i shouldn't say native elements because the flex boxes are now native elements in there as well so we're going to start off up here at the top and actually let me go back into the editor. I was on the live page there for a minute. And so let's come in here. One thing I want to undo is to take out this negative 160 pixels at the top that I used to pull one flex row up over the other. And we'll take that down. And now we can take a look at how I set this up. So I just have a section here. Inside the section, I have a row. And then inside of the row, I'm going to put in some flex containers. Could you try to build this where you had just the flex containers, not inside of a section and not inside of a row? You could, but the reason why you want to do it like this is because then you can bound the, um, the flex containers inside of the row. So it makes it a lot easier to control. Now, if you want those flex containers to be absolutely 100%, no matter how large the screen is, so somebody's got a 3,000 pixel wide screen, if you want it to take up the entirety of the screen, well, then you can do that by getting rid of the rows, getting rid of the containers, or setting the row to 100% width, getting rid of all the padding, all that. That clearly was not what the original was that Paul was looking at. In fact, he had two columns here. So in this case here, what I should have done probably is make a two-column row. Let's go back to his video here. So yeah, he had clearly a um, two columns is how I probably should have set this up. But of course, you can do that um, by just putting it into a... Uh, where are we here? I keep going to the wrong page. Let me kill these two right there. Okay, so we're back to my row here. So what I was saying is you could do a two column row. Uh, so over here, you'd have your column with your text in it, and then you'd have your other column where you're going to put in your flex containers. So inside of this row, then I put in a flex container. And what you're going to see is I put a single line black border all the way around all of them, just so you could see where the flex containers is because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the flex containers and then inside of here i just dropped in some images and on the bigger ones i said i wanted those 400 pixels and the smaller ones i said 200 pixels and i left in all the padding uh, so like all of these flex containers, that was an image I was in, all the flex containers have padding on them. I left that all in there. So again, you can distinguish the flex container from the images themselves. As you build this, you're going to want to go in though and you know choose the sizes of your images, choose what kind of padding you're going to have on the images, what kind of padding you ha have on the rows, what kind of a gap you have between the flex containers, what kind of padding you have on the flex containers, all those things you can choose on the fly as you're building it. I just wanted to show you the basic layout. So all you do is you come in here and I dropped in this one flex container. So what I'll do is come down here. Let's just do it right here in the middle of the screen. I will just rebuild this top one that I built because then the bottom one is exactly the same. We just flip it. So we're just going to add an element here. We're going to come over here to blank. And we're going to say we want to put in a flex container. And again, just so you can see it, I will come down and I will open up the border. So it's going to put a border around it. Now what do I want? I want two more flex containers inside of this flex container. So a couple of things, as long as I'm in this first flex container, let's give it some padding or some margin on the top just to push it down. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no wrap 
And then, which this is the default setting is no wrap. I don't know why ClickFunnels has it set to wrap. It should be no wrap. And then what we also want to do in here is leave this checked so that we are in a horizontal row. That's what we want here. We want a row, not a column, because we want to put these two flex boxes side by each. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to repeat what we just did which is to put in another flux container. So we're going to come into that flux container and we're going to come down and turn on the border and we're going to set this once again to no wrap and we're going to leave everything else alone, I do believe. Now what we want to do is we want to just clone this flux container. So when we clone that now, it's going to put them side by side because in the outer flex container, I said set it as row. Had I said set it as column, it puts them on top of each other like this, but we're going to just set it to row like that. So now we got them side by each. All I got to do now is come in, drop in my image, set that to 400. We're going to come over here, we're going to drop in another image, set this one to 200, and then what we're going to do is we're going to clone that image, and again, because we have this set as row in here, it's going to put them side by side. And then the other thing we want is we want them to just go to the top of the page. So we're going to click this button right here for align self, and that will pull it up to the top of the page. Now, in order to build the second one down here, and you can see I had this set to desktop only, um, in order to build the second one down here, all we have to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to clone this element right there. So now we have, oops, we have these two here and they are identical, and all we're gonna have to do now is we're going to click that gear, and instead of having it be a row left to right, we're gonna make it a row right to left. So we just click this little button right there, and it swaps the um, orientation of the two. And then, what do I want with this column over here, this, um, this flex container over here, I don't want this one at the top, because I put this one at the top, I want this one at the bottom. So we put that down to the bottom, and then in this case here, I came in and I gave this lower flux container, I gave this minus 160 pixels, because that's what I needed to get it to line up right. And although you see all the black lines around in here, because of, of all the lines around the boxes, this gives you a perfect grid layout with all of your images exactly where you want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and just delete out these two flux containers I just created. And so now we have our one from before. And what you notice here, like I said, is this one here is showing as desktop only, and we got another one here is showing as mobile only. And the reason why is that was just purely a function of getting them to line up properly, whether we are on desktop or mobile, because what we want when we go to mobile, we want everything just stacking up on top of each other. And with that negative 160 pixels of margin at the top of here, of course, has pushed it way down 160 pixels. So in order to be able to get rid of the 160 pixels, I just cloned that flex container took out the 160 on the top margin so i took that out there on the mobile version and on the desktop version i left in the negative 160 pixels so we can just put that back in negative 160 and it will pull it up now you also noticed when we went to mobile here that everything lined up on top of each other so let's go back into our sections and look at what we can do so what we do in order to as we're setting it up and in fact let me do this first let me take that uh take this back out of there so we can see things a little bit better so let's go into that element and you can come in here and right now we're set to desktop well if we click here we can see what it's going to look like in mobile view and if there were any changes. Now you're going to see here is when we go from desktop to mobile, all these little icons are going to basically rotate 90 degrees because the everything is different. Instead of being oriented um, horizontally, we want it oriented vertically. So in this case here, we go to our desktop view, and this is the outer container here, and really nothing changed in here. Uh, so let's go to one of the inner, um, one of the inner ones. Let me see here. It's a lot easier. It's uh, sometimes to come out here 
to uh, desktop view. So let's take a look at this. And now we'll go in here to mobile. And see now in this case here, in desktop, we are in row. And in mobile, we move it over here to column. So it takes it from being side by side and puts them one on top of each other. And so we did the exact same thing with the bottom element and then moved this up 160 pixels, have a nice little grid then when you're done. And um, in fact, let's take a look at this one more time and let's get rid of this here, put in our minus 160 again. And now let's save it and let's go to a live page really quick just to see what this looks like because as we come down, we're gonna see here once we get to mobile, now that's our mobile view. So what you may look at and go, okay, well in mobile then I had these set to 200, maybe I'm gonna change that, maybe I'll swap that out with different images and so that these images are, you know, 100% or whatever you want them to be at that point. So there's still a lot of spacing things you need to deal with and probably some mobile adjustments you're going to want to deal with. But for the most part, um, once you get the grid set up, then you can just play around with your images, put them mobile and, and whatnot if you want. Now for the next one down here, I just started building this and very quickly realized because what I wanted to do here, here we had two flex containers basically running horizontally and I thought okay how could we do the same thing and have the flex containers run up and down and I started going okay well we need this outer flex container for the the box itself then we need the two columns inside of there and then inside of each one of those columns then we had to have a a flex container on the top in this case here for the image and then we had to have another flex container below but inside of there we needed two more flex containers for the other two images and I started going well this is really kind of crazy really fast and so I said well if you're using flex this is a much better simpler solution up here if you're going to be using flex but there is one other way we can do this and it's simply by using um, sections and rows and elements just like you normally would except in this case here you got to come up to settings come to editor settings and click this box and it says there allows sections to behave as elements or sections so I'll show you exactly how this works by let me just do this let me just put in a new row down here at the bottom and in fact, what did I do here? I need a two, I need a two column row. So let's take that one out. So let's uh, come in here. We're going to add a row. We're going to add a two column row. And then inside of this left column, we're going to say, we want to put in another section. Now, normally you wouldn't have been able to do this into in 1.0. You certainly could not do this unless you were using some JavaScript to do it. So we're going to put in a full page there. Then we're going to put in a single column row. And then below that, we're going to put in a two column row. Same thing over here on this side. We're going to come in here. We're going to say blank. We're going to put in a full width column. Then we're going to put in a two column row. And below it, we are going to put in a one column row. And then all I simply did is I came in and I started putting in images. And let me just clone the image a couple times here. Obviously, you need to resize your images, you need to change all of your padding, all that kind of stuff like we already discussed up at the top. But this is the simplest way to do it because now if we come and we size this down, oops, let me see here, I gotta do this on a live page. Um, let's see here, we come and size this down and we go to mobile and let's see here down at the bottom. Again, we got a big image, we got a couple smaller images, and then a big image again. And in this case here, I had set this one to 400, 200, 200, just like I did on my original example. And so again, you might wanna take a look at that and think about, okay, instead of doing that, let's just try this instead. That's a live page, I don't wanna be there. Let's try this instead. Let's go here and let's make this 100%. And then this lower one, let's do exactly the same. Let's make it 100% for each of them. Let's see what that gets us. And this one here as well, 100%. And in fact, let me just do this. Let's clone this a couple times.
and let's save that and preview this page and let's see if that works better to make those all 100% because they're going to be bounded then by what you have here for your columns. So let's see if that works a little bit better. And we got to scroll down the page. And yes, that works absolutely a lot better. Unless, of course, you don't want these, um, the lower images to be the same. And then, like I said, so you got issues with uh, column padding, uh, row padding, all that kind of stuff. So you got to work all that in as you're calculating all this. But that's a good way to not only very easily, very simply build this as a grid pattern, but then also be able to, especially this version down here, um, also be able to very quickly just boom, it's, it's available on mobile and looking good right away on mobile as soon as you, uh, as soon as you click on it. So that is it for this training. If you got any questions, just let me know.